Hello everyone, my name is Andrea Gianpiccolo, coming from the University of Bath. I would like to thank BRE for funding my PhD. I'm in my last year and I worked and I'm still working on synthesis and characterization of doped TiO2 nanostructures for coatings in both lime and wood substrates. So this would be the outline of the pre presentation we are going to, to see. So background objectives, material and methodology of producing both uh, pa particles and coatings. Finally, results, conclusion, and hopefully for future works. So I'm, I'm part of a European project called ECOSI. Uh, it's a FP7 founded project. And the aim of, of the project is to use eco-sustainable materials for both interior and exterior wall panels. My, my task in, in the project is the, about the photocatalytic coatings of both phases of the, the, the panel. My coatings are all based uh, on TiO2. TiO2 is a semiconductor that uh, works uh, using photocatalytic reaction to improve indoor quality. As you can see in, in, the, in the scheme, uh, when the TiO2 is, uh, is heated by uh, an, uh, a photon of, of the right energy, uh, it, it creates a, hole, a couple uh, electron hole. This can, uh, can start uh, uh, both uh, um, reaction of oxidation and re re reduction, uh, being able to de degrade complex pollutant in, more, in less harm harmful products. Um, in, in, in theory, pure TiO2 works really good in the UV light. My aim is, is to dope the TiO2 using uh, metal or non-metal elements to improve its performance in the visible light. That is, one, that is the one we aim for in the in, mainly in the internal environment. The reaction with pollutant can be various with uh, nitrogen, for, for example, uh, as an indo in inorganic pollutant, or other organic pollutant as VOCs, or any volatile organic compounds, like such as benzene, formaldehyde, limonene, and various bacteria and vi viruses. My, my objectives were to synthesize the different kinds of particles. In, you know, I'm basically, uh, I'm mainly uh, occupied of pure TiO2 and cobalt doped TiO2. Uh, in, in the last part of my PhD, I also used, started to use different substrate coated with TiO2 as, as, as well. And one, one of the last one was the, the graphene that shows really nice uh, results when compared to commercial particles such as the GUSA P25 and Kronos 7000. I, uh, I produce all my particles, both uh, the undoped, doped one and the substrate coated with a soldier synthesis when I use a really easy system basically made by a separatory funnel that contains an, uh, an alcoholic solution and a round bot bottom flask with the, the, the precursor of titanium dioxide. This is the reaction in involved. It's, a really, it's, it's quite a long reaction. It takes six hours more or less, but it's really easy when, when, when you're doing it in, in the lab. These are a few, few SAM pictures of different different magnification of the product that, they have, that I have. On the last one, you can see the, the graphene in the black all coated with, and it's not uniformly coated, but it is definitely coated with TiO2. Uh, we used also aluminum oxide. I will, I will explain after why we, we did it. Uh, of the, before using the TiO2, we, need, we needed to dry, uh, because when produced is in a colloidal so solution, we had to then dry it and heat it up at 450 to reach the, the, the right crystalline phase we, we wanted. You can see the really nice picture of the nanoparticles on the right side of, of the screen. We used uh, aluminum oxide as an idea because uh, one of the substrates involved was MDF. MDF, who, who, want, who doesn't know, is a medium density fiberboard. Uh, we, we got it from uh, one, one of the partners uh, of the European pr project, and they used aluminum oxide to coat the, the surface of the panel to make it more resistant to scratch and, and ab 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 abrasion. So we, we thought that uh, an idea was to coat the, titanium with the aluminum with the titanium dioxide to then be used on, on, the, on the MDF boards. 
uh, we, we also had the idea to use graphene. Graphene, uh, together with nanotubes, are really used in a lot of different fields, such as batteries, contaminant remove, wa water depuration. So our idea was to couple the, the property of the graphene in, uh, in, uh, electronic re re in retarding the electronic re re recombination with the, the ability of TiO2 of the degrading pollutant. Uh, after the, pr the production of the, um, of the various particles, we then uh, went to the, the, to the actual coating. We worked on two different uh, substrates, lime substrate, lime-based substrate, and MDF. In this case, we did different, different kind of, 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 co of coatings. We decided to go with the, the second one. So it's basically uh, some commercial particle mixed with li some lime render and put it on, on, on the substrate we wanted. And the, the protocol, sorry, was used by, uh, was produced by Te Technalia, an, 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 another of the partners in involved in the project. This is the MDF board I was talking you ab ab about. Uh, so we, we, we produce some aluminum oxide and to, to, to be put on the top uh, of, of, of the surface, but also some coatings are as well made basically of water, uh, isopropanol and a bit of polyurethane to make the uh, particles stick on, on, on the surface. Uh, we, we did some testing. This is what the, the test uh, that involved the use of just the, the particles when we also tested the, the, the coatings. For the, the test of the particles, we used an ISO standard 1067 8 to 10, 10. Uh, it, it involves the use of methylene blue. Methylene blue is a blue dye, and we, we have put it in, in solution together with nanoparticles. And when irradiated with light, the nanoparticles with their photocatalytic activity can reduce the amount of, of uh, methylene blue, degrading it, so uh, making the solution uh, clearer, less blue. And we, th we followed the degradation of the methylene blue using a UV sp spectrophotometer. When uh, we are talking about the, the, the coatings, it's really hard to test the photocatalytic activity of coatings because uh, there, are no, 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 there are no ISO ab about it. And what we found is that uh, Ink Intelligent is a commercial product that can easily uh, uh, check the photocatalytic activity on a semi-quantitative way. They're basically uh, inks that you put on the surface and again, irradiated with UV light. If there is a photocatalytic activity uh, involved, they will uh, uh, remove the, the, the color of the, of the dye because of the, the degradation of the dye itself. We tried to use an, uh, a novel uh, approach to the, to the, the degradation uh, of NOx using photocatalytic uh, reaction using this ma quadrupole mass spectrometer, so a residual gas analyzer. This is uh, actually a picture of the system that we use and a little line graph of, of, the, of the, the, the system. It basically is divided in two parts. On the left part, we have the reaction chamber that we, we fill up with NO2 and the, the sample that we want to study. And then on the, on, the, on the right side, there is a turbo molecular pump linked to the, um, a mass spectrometer that basically um, looked at the, uh, both the composition of the air inside the reaction chamber throughout the, the time. So basically what we are looking at is the degradation of the NO2. And we suppose that uh, we, when we are doing different experiments with the presence of the particles and without the, the particles, the, when the particles are present and the irradiation is present as well, the degradation of NOx will be faster due to the photocatalytic ac activity again. These are different bits of the, of the uh, chamber tested. So as, as you can see here, on the left side, we are looking at a 3D representation of the gas composition in the chamber. The graph on behind, so the, the one with higher peaks, is the time zero. So you can actually see how in, in during the, the period of an experiment that lasted like, between 30 and 40 minutes, we have a, a, de a de de degradation of all, all of the gases. I uh, did uh, a detail on the mass of uh, 46, there is the mass of N N NO2, and as you can see, it's going down during the, the time. As, uh, the same thing you can see on, on, on the trend out of 30 minutes. When, when you make a, a comparison with the different uh, the different uh, anal analysis, so different tests with or without the, the samples, and with or without the irradiation, hopefully the slope 
of the, 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 the results when the nanoparticles and the photocatalytic activity is present will be faster. So it will be a faster degradation of N NO2. Uh, these are just a, a couple of, I obviously did some characterization on the, uh, on the particles. And you can see an XRD pattern on the left side. The first pattern you see where is K7000 is commercial particles. So it's the, the phase that we are actually interested in. And as you can see, my particles that are not that, that far from, from the commercial particles. Uh, in, in, this is the, these are the results coming from the methylene blue de de degradation. So the test when we put uh, just nanoparticles on a methylene blue so solution. And the first two, you can see there is uh, radiation with the UV light. I don't know if you remember, but on the first slide, I told you that pure tetanium dioxide is the, uh, has the best performance in the UV light. And you, you can see it from both, both uh, graphs, where P25 is commercial pure the titanium dioxide and has the, the best performance when it's de, uh, degrading almost 70% of, of the methylene blue during, in 60 minutes of time. Where we're going to do the white light, so the, the one we're interested in, so we, we, uh, we started with the idea to shift, to change the band gap of, of the system, so to shift the performance and have better performances in the visible light. You can see that actually the results with the graphene, uh, with both the graphene sample and the cobalt dose on the left side, they're even better than commercial particles. So these are re really promising uh, re results to use this kind, this kind of uh, salt gel synthesized uh, system, also in com commercially available coatings. These are the, the results from the test of the coatings themselves. On the first, on the first the row, you can see the lime sample. Basically, as, as I, can, I told you before, I don't know if you really can see on the top one because the quality of, of the image is not the best, to be honest. But on the bottom one, you can actually see that uh, when we coated the, the sample, we covered one part with aluminum foil just to avoid irradiation and make a comparison with, between the presence of the radiation and the absence of irradiation. In the first two samples of, of each of, of the row, they represent the, the coating with commercial particles and cobalt doped particles. If you see that the, the last slide is after 15 minutes of irradiation, and you can actually see a really big difference between the coated and uh, uncoated. It means that the, 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 both the um, coatings were photocatalytically active. In fact, you can see there is a last one is a blank to see that the, the <coughs> dye is not degrad degrading by itself. So conclusion are that soil gel is a really straightforward method to, to synthesize pure cobalt doped and various hybrids using different substrates. Uh, in my case, aluminum oxide and graphene. The samples at 450 had the anatase, that is the crystalline phase that we wanted and is the most active in both visible and UV light. The me methylene blue test uh, checked that co the cobalt doped particles are, are uh, active activity comparable to the commercial one in a visible range. And the graphene one they're really interested in are, are ev even more performing in visible light than the commercially available one. And Ink Intelligent is a really nice product and really easy way to uh, find if a coating is uh, performing with photocatalytic activity or not. Future work will uh, will focus on increase and reduce the increase the yield and reduce the aggregation of cobalt doped nanoparticles because I have just one problem of aggregation of the particles themselves. Uh, I, I will assess the commercial availability of applying the photocatalytic particles in indoor panel. I will try to do some tests uh, with VOCs in, conjun in conjunction con with BRE in, in Watford and formulate a sustainable material with self-cleaning properties and finally detect uh, photocatalytic acti activity of particles and coating using the mass spec system I showed you before. Thank you very much for your attention.